Hey everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I am continuing my Halloween series this week with a scary cute bundle. Um, this project today is a door hanger. In our neighborhood, we do something called booing, um, where you boo your neighbor, you leave them a treat hanging on their door or sitting on their doorstep and you ring the doorbell and you run. It's fun, the kids love it. Um, when I was a teacher, we also did it at school. So I made this so that you can hang it on a doorknob and leave some treats. It's not too terribly big, um, like a bucket is, where you have to fill it up with lots of stuff, but you could fill it with, you know, several pieces of candy, uh, maybe some fun little Halloween things. So I'm gonna show you how to make this. We're gonna use this awesome bundle, and then you'll have something to use uh, this year for booing your neighbors. All right, let's make our box first. Um, this box is made with 12 by 12 cardstock. We carry packs of 12 by 12 basic black. So that's what I'm gonna use. And you're gonna leave it right at 12 by 12. On one side, you're gonna score it at three, five and three fourths, eight and three fourths. Let me do that one again. It didn't go all the way down. Not used to this big paper. And then 11 and a half. Then turn it and on the other side, score it at five and at nine and a fourth. Now, if you didn't get all those directions, hop over to my blog. I have a free PDF there for you. Um, it has the measurements as well as the supply list and two other scary cute projects. All right, so grab your bone folder and burnish all those lines. We've got quite a few. You wanna make sure they're nice and crisp. Looks like, woo, looks like we've got six score lines. All right, now grab your scissors and we're gonna cut over here on this edge, you have the skinny half inch section. Down here on the bottom, you are going to cut that little section off, okay? So, and I'm gonna cut at an angle. This little tab right here is gonna be an angle. We're gonna cut this off completely with our trimmer in a minute. Now down here, just trim these with your scissors, stopping at that score line. All right, now, because this is a really long edge, um, I'm gonna use my trimmer to make sure that it's straight. And I want to leave this section, let me make sure I'm doing this right, doot, doot, doot. Yeah, nope, we're gonna leave this last one right here, okay? So down here, starting at our score line, we're gonna come, we're gonna put this, make sure it's lined up in the ditch right there, and down here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that all the way in the video, but make sure you stop right here, okay? And you can, without getting my head in the, camera, you should be able to see, and I kind of felt it when it hit that score line right there. Now I'm going to turn it and we'll, we'll do down to this part right here. Let's see, I think I'm going to start down here and see if I can get it without sticking my head in and perfect. Okay. So that's what your piece looks like. We actually want to make sure that that comes off. Let's trim that off right there like that. Okay, so now really easy to put together. Um, we're gonna put it together partially and then we're gonna cut that hole there in the top for, the, uh, for it to hang on the door handle. So put your tear and tape right there. And then if you've scored it right, you should just be able to fold it in half like that. Now, before you put the rest of it together, grab your simply scored and you're gonna need a circle and we're gonna make um, a little frame for our circle too so I started with a scallop to see make sure it fits there this is the largest of our scallop dies and then I picked a circle that would nest right in there okay so get that circle and grab your other plate and move, let's move this all the way over so that it's not gonna get caught up on that machine. And then just run it through. And I'm gonna run it back through. And there we have our little uh, circle. While we're here, actually, we're gonna have to do some other die cutting in a minute, and we will do that in a minute. So we'll bring them back over in a sec. 
All right, so now I have three pieces of designer series paper. This is from the Gingham Cottage designer series paper pack. Um, I love this um, black and orange. I think it's very Halloween-ish. So I'm gonna put these on here. Um, this front piece is three inches across and this piece is two and three fourths. So uh, cut your paper accordingly. Again, those measurements will be there on the PDF. Now you could also do this for other holidays if you wanted. It doesn't have to necessarily be Halloween. All right, so now we're gonna fold, we want this corner to be rounded. So this, or this edge, this is gonna be the last one we fold in. So I take my two middle, fold them in, and actually I'm gonna use some liquid glue here just for the sake of the video. It's a little bit faster than the tear and tape, and it holds really well. Here in South Texas, this is actually my go-to. All right, so fold that in and then fold that. Make sure it's nice and straight. Then we're gonna do this one. And last but not least, we're gonna do the front, the front square. Make sure you get nice and generous with that adhesive. All right, so there is your box, all right? Now let's decorate it. All right, we're gonna use blending brushes to make this um, kind of a sunset scene. And I'm starting with a piece of basic white that is a little bit bigger than my die, kind of gives me some wiggle room. And I'm gonna start down at the bottom with Daffodil Delight. And I'm just gonna kind of go up from the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. I always like to start off of my paper, not setting my brush down on my paper because sometimes when you do that, you get a hard edge. So if you start down on the grid paper, you won't have that problem. All right, now let's turn it and switch over to pumpkin pie. And pumpkin pie is a lot darker than um, Daffodil Delight. So go easy at first depending on how juicy your ink pad is too, um, will depend on how much color you get. All right, when you have those nice and blended, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of yellow. See, I set my finger down on there, which left a little bit of ink. That's why I like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room with the paper and cut it after I've inked it. Okay. So we're gonna cut this out with this die. We need to cut out a piece of the black with this die. And for that one, we're gonna make that a sticker. That way it's really easy to adhere. So I'm gonna lay my adhesive, my adhesive sheet on here like that. Okay, I'm gonna cut that right there. And then I'm gonna do it again on this end but I'm gonna actually leave kind of a, a gap between the adhesive. That's gonna help me peel off those papers when I'm done. It's gonna give me a little place to, you know, to use my finger to catch that adhesive. Because sometimes when you have it completely covered with adhesive, your finger's like, I can't get it, I can't peel it off. So that will help. Now I do have adhesive hanging over the edge and I don't want that because that's gonna gunk up my plates for my machine. So my scissors, these are my gunky scissors. <laughs> so it's okay if they get gunky. All right. And then we've got our circle that we're going to do to go around our um, handle. So um, the other thing we need to do also is our sentiment. Let's set stamp it. And that way we can get everything cut at once. Trick or treat. You're so sweet in gorgeous grape. And then I will cut it out with a stitched banner from our stylish shape dies. All right, bring all this over. Let's see how much we can get on here at once. I have a feeling it's not all gonna fit. So we'll get that lined up. And then we'll bring this down here, put that there. And then we'll put this on here like that. And we'll save the other one for the next pass through. 
Let's make sure that's on there. Okay, run it through. I'm gonna go through twice, pull those out. I'm gonna go through twice with this one because it's got some intricate cuts there and I wanna make sure that it cuts through really well. Yeah, we did good. All right, the other thing you gotta do with this piece is take this one that we just used and put it around so that it creates that frame. All right, so we'll move that down and then we'll get this one. Then we're gonna make another frame here with our scallop circle and our regular circle. And there we go, look at that. And look at that. Okay, so now, my mess a little bit, make some room for all of our goodies. We've got that, we've got that, and we'll move these over here. Now we need to stamp our little trick-or-treaters on here, and I'm going to use my Stamparatus because for one, I want to make sure I get it in the right spot, and two, I want it to be really dark and really black, so if it doesn't stamp exactly right the first time, I can ink it and lay it down again. So lay, pick it up with your Stamparatus plate, and then I'm using Stays On Black. Stays On is a good, dark, rich, black ink. All right, and it smells good. I love the way it smells. All right, let's see how we did. Put lots of pressure on there. And then, yeah, looks good, but I think I want it darker. Let's do it again. Let's add another layer of ink. Oh yes, very nice. Okay, so now we'll move this out of the way. Let's bring over this little thing that we created a sticker. Remember we've got the little break in the adhesive which helps our finger get that adhesive out. We need to get these little guys, these little extras out of the way. And now we're gonna lay that right on here. There we go. All right. Now you kind of have to push it in. Um, that it, that ink is still pretty wet on there. So give it a second to kind of set and kind of rub it like that and let it set. All right. So we've got this, we've got everything and um, we're going to layer it all up and put it together. Okay. We've got all of our pieces. I also cut out a couple of bats from, um, Orchid Oasis Glimmer Paper. Um, and I have also a basic white stitched scallop rectangle from the Contour Scallop Dies. We're going to put first our little spooky trick-or-treaters scene right there. And then we'll take, let's get that centered a little bit better. Right in the middle. Okay, and then we'll take a dimensional <clears throat> and put this one down here like that. All right, bring over your box and we're gonna put this right here. Trick or treat, you're so sweet. That's cute, let's put that a little bit lower like that so we can see him. All right, then we'll do our bats. I'm just gonna use some Tombow for our bats and let's see if I can get them picked up. I'm gonna set one right there and the other one, I kind of like to fold them out too so they look like they're flying, goes right there. Now this guy, very carefully, I'm gonna put some, just a little bit of Tombow. Don't put too much or it'll squirt out and you'll be able to see it. Lay that right there. All right, now fill your box with treats and then take this awesome mesh, silver mesh ribbon and we'll tie a bow. 
Now, if you work in an office, this would be a fun thing, a tradition to start. If you haven't done this already, start booing other people. You never know who booed you. You just get surprised one day when you walk in. And that makes for kind of a fun October. Just because we're not kids doesn't mean we still don't love to be surprised with Halloween candy. When I was a teacher, we loved it. Everybody was booing everybody. And there you have it. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this project. Make sure you visit my blog to check out the other two and get that full supply list. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.